Leading our bulletin in battle, Cape Town Mayor Patricia Delo says she's taking the Democratic Alliance to court. Now, this comes after the party withdrew her membership. Addressing the media earlier today, Delo revealed that she would approach the court on Friday. Delil says she won't allow the party to bully her into leaving. She says she still considers herself Cape Town mayor. Now, senior party leaders announced earlier today that Delil's membership had ceased. They said this occurred when Delil stated during a radio interview that she was prepared to leave the Democratic Alliance. The party explained that its constitution allowed it to act in such an instance the DA further stripped DeLille of her mayoral duties with immediate effect. I will show on Friday that this so-called automatic cessation clause is unconstitutional and it's unfairly applied to me. That is the purpose of going to court on Friday. I've always maintained that my only aim in this matter was to clear my name and that I was not married to any position. My integrity and my name are things that I've worked very hard for, for more than 40 years in politics. And these are things I value more than anything else. The party used a little statement in a radio interview that she would walk away as a basis to oust her. In the meantime, Ms. DeLille took part in a radio interview with Eusebius MacKaiser on Radio 702 on the 26th of uh, April 2018. In the course of this interview, Ms. DeLille on two separate occasions indicated that she intended to resign from the DA as soon as she had, quote, uh, cleared her name. The first was as follows, and you. Eusebius asks the question, let's say the morning after you win the legal case, however, do you really want to still be part of the DA? And Patricia DeLille replies, no, 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 no. I've said it many times, Eusebius, you know the writing's on the wall, but people don't want me for whatever reason. Uh, and then on another occasion, Mr. McKaiser uh, asks, if I hear you, you are saying, ideally, I want to clear my name, Eusebius. That's why I'm going to court. And if I win this battle, and when I win it, because I know I've done nothing wrong, then the morning after I've won a court case, then I will resign from the DA. Uh, and Mr. Lil replies as follows. I will walk away. You summed it up correctly. <coughs> The Democratic Alliance Constitution provides in Section 3512 that a member ceases to be a member when he or she publicly declares his or her intention to resign and or publicly declares his or her resignation from the party. During a radio interview, Patricia Dill said she was prepared to walk away from the Democratic Alliance. The 702 and K Talk interview with Eusebius Makaiser took place on the 26th of April. Makaiser asked Delil if she would resign in the event she won a court action against the Democratic Alliance. Delil responded that as a deployee of the party, she would relinquish her position. However, her comment was made in light of the assumption that she had first to clear her name. I will walk away. You will. You, sum, you summed it up correctly. Because really, it, it, it is not about hanging on to, I mean, I, 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 I'm serving there at the behest of the DA. The DA has, has I've gone through a process, an electoral college, they put me into that position. I'm not representing my jacket, I'm representing the DA. And if the DA feels they want to put somebody else in that position, they're also entitled to do that. The Democratic Alliance has confirmed that Deputy Mayor Ian Nilsson is now the acting executive mayor of Cape Town. Nilsson would take up the role until such a time as the council elects a new executive mayor. The council would need to elect a new mayor within 90 days. Meanwhile, the city manager has informed the Independent Electoral Commission about the council vacancy. As acting executive mayor, I hold all the authority of the mayoral seat and committed to continuing to serve the residents of Cape Town with uninterrupted service delivery. Having served as the Executive Deputy Mayor 
for the past nine years and having been a city councillor for 22 years and having been involved in the leadership of numerous administrations. I'm fully apprised of the needs of the city and those that we serve. The Democratic Alliance has ceased the party membership of Alderman Patricia De Lille. This means that she has lost her seat as a councillor and is therefore no longer the executive mayor of the city of Cape Town with immediate effect. In terms of the Municipal Structures Act, when the post of executive mayor is vacant, the executive deputy mayor, who is elected by council, automatically holds all mayoral authority until such time as the new executive mayor is elected by council. The mayoral committee, which was appointed by the outgoing executive mayor, dissolves with immediate effect due to the vacancy. As it stands, at this moment, only the Speaker and I are political authorities in the City of Cape I will now apply my mind to, in the upcoming days to appointing an interim mayoral committee that will serve Council uh, until Council elects a new Executive Mayor. The City Manager has informed the IEC about the Council vacancy and we await due process to unfold and we will communicate further in due course. Now joining us on this very story is Professor Shadra Guter, constitutional law expert. He's live in studio and then we're also joined uh, by Natasha Mazzone from the DA's Federal Council. We're also joined by Azania Matiwina, who is from the Friends of Patricia DeLille. Thank you very much for your time. Um, perhaps to start with you, Professor. There's a lot to unpack around Patricia DeLille's matter, but if we had to just confine ourselves for now to the developments from today the cessation of membership. Now, the DA invoked section 3.5.1.2, which clearly states that a, mem uh, a person ceases to be a member of the Democratic Alliance if they publicly resign or publicly express their intention to resign. Now, we've listened to that clip. Would you say it meets the criteria for the termination? Well, I think to start with, I would like to talk from a constitutional point of view. And the constitution of the country gives the people the right to dignity, the right to belong to an association, and the association has a right to have its own constitution. However, I think the Democratic Alliance is making a big mistake to really elevate the idea that its constitution is above the constitution of the country. It is the constitution of the country under section one, two of the constitution that is supreme and any act done by anybody, including political parties, individuals, the president, parliament, uh, you know, judiciary, and has to conform with the national constitution. So, under these circumstances, it is going to be a very complicated case to argue in court. So, uh, uh, Delil doesn't have an easy case to build up, but neither does the DA have it. But listening the whole day, even from the morning, when uh, there was a press conference by the federal, you know, Council of the DA, it was pathetic because the people who are speaking, really speaking, were white people. A white woman and a white man, the black people and one who looked as if they are of mixed color, did not speak much. So, I think the DA may be making a big mistake because it benefited a lot from Patricia DeLille really joining them to form the Democratic Alliance. And I think uh, the DA people do not appreciate that and the loss it is going to have in Patricia DeLille resigning moving away from the DA because it's going to affect the DA badly 
in the elections that are going to come. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Professor, saying that the Democratic Alliance benefited a lot, but I want to come back to the charges of nepotism, maladministration, uh, and perhaps bringing the party into disrepute. But let me rope in uh, friends of Patricia's Azania. Azania, your take on today's developments? Look, ours, it's simple. Uh by the boogeyman of diversity. Um, you would remember, if you track back in terms of uh, how the DA has handled uh, leaders of, uh, of color, from Gerald Mokel going to Peter Mare and now Patricia Dillier, it's been the same uh, uh, manner that they've been treating leaders of color. And in, in, in also uh, um, amplifying what uh, Professor Guto has just mentioned, the, 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 the black people that are there, you can, you can see that they mere window dressers. They're not there to be able to take decisions. They're not there to inform decisions. And unfortunately, Patricia DeLille was one of the, of the leaders that was very strong, a leader, a leader of color that can, could be able to raise issues of communities. And clearly, the DA is uncomfortable with this. You would remember when the DA initially uh, made the announcement of the, uh, around the issue of the disciplinary hearing uh, with regards to Patricia Dillon. It was a united uh, a front with uh, the leader of, of, of the DA, uh, Musi Maimane, being present. You would be surprised, surprised today, Musi Maimane was absent because, of course, he also has his own discomfort. But also, let's look more closely around the politics of, of, of the Western Cape and more specifically around uh, the city of Cape Town. Now, if, if, if you know, currently the DA has its leader, uh, its leader being uh, uh, the, the Human Settlements uh, uh, Minister, uh, um, Madigizel, who is black. And we are going towards 2019, and the traditional voter of the DA is not comfortable supporting a leader of color to be able to lead the campaign of the DA leading towards 2019. It's a clear message that the DA is sending to black people in the Western Cape and to black people specifically in the, in, in, in the city of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. That Azania. the DA, that, just, just, just to complete, that the DA doesn't, in, in its uh, political culture, the DA does not have a room for black people to be able to participate uh, effectively. Mm -hmm. Now, Azania, you say that uh, uh, Musima Imani's absence today uh, is indicative of a man who's particularly uncomfortable with this whole process, but there's nothing that the DA has communicated as to why he wasn't there. Precisely my point, that the DA has not communicated that, because you would remember, initially when they started the process of, of, of announcing the disciplinary hearing, and eventually when they were announcing, when they were stripping uh, the mayor of the city of Cape Town of the powers, they were showing a united force. But, uh, but, but now... Uh, essentially, what is happening is that there is a fracture within the DA factions. One faction being the, the, the faction that is being led by people of color, namely by Patricia Dili, and the other faction being the faction that is being led by white people, namely the, 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 the premier of the Western Cape. So those are the issues that are happening in, 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 in the DA currently. And unfortunately, the people of color do not have the necessary authority and power to be able to take decisions. We seem the to have functioning lost. of the organization. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Professor, now I just want to bring us again, before we get to the race dynamics, bring us back again to the Constitution. I went through that particular section around the cessation of membership, and it really was stated such as that, to say that if a member expresses publicly that they have resigned, their membership is then terminated. But you still say that this constitution needs to be subjected to our constitution or this very section itself. Mm -hmm. Is there something unconstitutional here? Because they agreed to it as members of the Democratic Alliance and mm -hmm. she went on to publicly state that she would walk away unless we are reading it in the wrong context. Uh, the constitution of the Democratic Alliance or, or any party in the country, whether it is the ANC, EFF and so on, is below the constitution of the country. And therefore, she has volunteered to be a member of the party 
And for the party to say we are going to drive you out because you have expressed an intention, you have not done it. You have simply indicated that if she doesn't win this case, she will move out. She hasn't moved out. So that point will have to be interrogated in a, a judicial process in a court of law to be able to say, are you driving me out or am I pulling out? And the DA thinks, oh, this is somebody who is already indicating they may move out, but they haven't. And she's fighting for her membership at the moment. So I think that that is important to be able to point out that if the DA is not careful, is going to suffer very badly out of this particular case. But at the same time, I think uh, Patricia DeLille is quite right to say, I'm not just going to run away because there's a faction within the party that want me to be out. I'm going to fight it using the laws of the country of which the constitution of this country and the various legislation dealing with uh, representatives in parliament, in the national legislatures, in provincial legislatures, and so on, deal with. Let those be looked into and see where does the truth lie. But all I was trying to say is that if the outcome of all that process uh, is that she's been removed and removed correctly, the DA is going to suffer terribly politically. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So there's the, the legal point, constitutional point, and there's the political ramifications that will come out of this. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the party and we've also got the state. Conflation thereof. It seems to be the biggest issue. The likes of Pierre de Force have written about this. And it seems the DA these days has been uh, somewhat uh, having, I, I don't know, not striking that balance properly. We've had with the water crisis, uh, we had Musi Maimani speaking out when he doesn't occupy a position in government. And now we've had Patricia Delo being withdrawn as a mayor, whereas there's no legitimate process within the mayoral committee or government structure to withdraw her. At least that process has not been concluded, but here she has been withdrawn by party members. How does that work? Yeah, uh, Patricia Delil is a mayor of uh, the metro of Cape Town city. And from that point of view, she's not just a mayor of the DA, she's a mayor of the city. And I think at high election point, some members from different political parties voted for her. So for the DA to think that it just commands everything within Cape Town municipality is wrong. And I think those will be argued in court. But to me, what is important is that we have a leader who is willing to go all the way to the end, and Patricia DeLille is really doing that. And here we are dealing with somebody who has walked a long journey before all these people calling themselves politicians in the uh, Cape Municipality, DA, and so on, were there. She was a leader of uh, within uh, the Pan-Africanist Congress. She then formed her own political party, which then joined with the uh, uh, Democratic Party to form the DA. So she's a resource which I think only foolish people can try to brush aside and think it will not impact negatively on the DA. It will.
Mm -hmm. But is it not unfair to just confine this issue to, to a racial issue, to say that there's no legitimate uh, case against her if they speak of nepotism, everything else that was leveled against mm -hmm. her? Could we not say that perhaps maybe they missed the plot when they decided now to, to rely on, on this specific session, uh, section when they could have just allowed the, the, the trial to continue? and then either find her innocent or guilty. Yeah, I, I agree with you that really the matter will have to be decided in a court of law, evidence to be produced, and if the evidence is convincing and uh, beyond reasonable doubt or uh, within the balance of probabilities and so on, because it's a civil matter at this point, that is fine, that should happen in order to build the rule of law and constitutionalism in the country. But we can't have constitutionalism and the rule of law driven by the whims and so on of members of political parties, of individuals in companies or universities and so on. So I think you are quite right that let the matter go to court, let the evidence be produced, let an independent judge evaluate them and find who is wrong and who is right. Mm -hmm. Azania, your take on the Democratic Alliance's position that Patricia DeLille tried to block uh, this disciplinary process at every turn? In fact, that is not true. But the only request that Patricia DeLille was requesting was that this disciplinary hearing must be made public. Now, the importance of that, that one is recognizing that this is an internal political organizational matter. But Patricia Dillon is a public figure and a city of Cape Town mayor, more specifically, meaning that the city of Cape Town people are interested on the outcomes that might result on the ousting of their mayor. So that is why she requested that she made that, that request. So it's never been true that uh, she's been stifling the, the, the continuation of this process of the disciplinary hearing. In fact, she's on record where she was stating that the issue of the disciplinary hearing must be expedited so that she can be able to clear her name. In each and every interview that has followed suit after that, she's been stating the same line and been making the same request to say that this process needs to be transparent and open. And of course, you would know that the values of the DA, they, they promote it, they speak about the, the principle of transparency. Now, that is in line with that principle, to say that the, city, the, the, the people of the city of Cape Town need to know that what is happening with their mayor and what resulted in the removal of their mayor. Otherwise, you are going to be having someone who's going to be having a cloud over their head. Because it was the DA itself that made the charges public and not Patricia Delay. So it, it, it's only fair to allow her to, to allow the DA to be able to make the process fair and have an independent person who was going to be presiding that process. Then such that people can be able to be taken into confidence that indeed the DA had a case against the mayor. So it's not an issue of the mayor is stopping the issue of, uh, of the disciplinary hearing. Of course, the disciplinary hearing must happen because there are charges that have been placed in front of of, 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 of Patricia Dili. But how do you then present those in secrecy? Because then essentially people would not know what was the evidence that was led and what are the issues that might have led to, 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 to Patricia Dili being, 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 uh, being ousted if it would be the case. So essentially the, the, the DA wanted to, co to conduct a kangaroo court. But uh, unfortunately Patricia Dili stopped it before it actually even happened. Mm -hmm. Now, Azania, it's clear that relations are strained at this point. Would it not be perhaps to Patricia DeLille's benefit in terms of peace and sanity uh, to, to just walk away at this point? Or you feel it's just a matter of principle, as she has stated, that she wants to indicate that everybody is equal before the law? Now, that, that is a very important question that you've just asked. Because you must remember that... Uh, the DA says that it's, it's, it, it invoked the cessation of the membership of, of Patricia Dillil uh, because of what happened on 702. Part of it, it was to say that there is a cloud that has been set above the head of Patricia, of the person of Patricia Dillil. And therefore, that is why she needed to clear that first. And then 
if she wins that process, she indicated that she's more than willing to walk away because she's serving at the behest of the DA. That's an acceptable fact. Now, how do you then avoid a, a, a giving someone a fair hearing and be able to opening up that process and then letting everyone know? I, th I mean, I think Patricia Dilil, in fact, she would be naive not to, to acknowledge that the relations between herself and the DA has been strained. And therefore, that is why she needed to walk away. And I think that the interview itself opened up that, 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 that curtain to say that, of course, indeed, the relations have been strained. But what are the underlying issues? What are the real underlying issues that needed to be dealt with? And in terms of what she had indicated, she had indicated those issues that she would like them to be made public. And if they made public, then she can be able uh, to clear her name in public and be able to walk away. And uh, again, the professor is correct. The intention to walk away precedes the issue of clearing her name. She needs to first clear her name and she can walk away. Mm -hmm. Professor, should she win in court? What do you think this would mean for the Democratic Alliance? Well, I think that the Democratic Alliance is in a downward spiral on this particular issue of uh, uh, delay. And I think they have to open up their minds. And they have been rising on an upward spiral, but they are going to go down on a downward spiral. The other matter which I think this case will um, clarify in a court of law is whether or not a political party can change its constitution to say we are going to have a clause within the constitution saying we can recall somebody who was elected legitimately within the party uh, without going to a party conference. And by doing that, I think that question of what we call now the Patricia DeLille clause, yes. like we had in Robert's book where and so on during the apartheid era, is going to be examined. And I think they have to be careful about that. Mm. No, it certainly remains a very interesting case. Gentlemen, thank you very much. More news and updates on the other side of this break.